Hey everyone, Clem here. Welcome back to my Node.js crash course. And in this video, we'll be talking about template engines in Node.js. Template engines allow us to generate HTML markup with dynamic data. So we'll be focusing on two very popular template engines, namely EJS and Handlebars. So let's get started. First of all, why do we need template engines? Why can't we just send regular HTML from the server? To answer that question, I'm going to create a really quick server here in Node.js using Express. So how do we do that? We come here and we just need to init our npm package since Express is a third party npm package. We just do npm init. I'll just add the modifier here, dash y, to just answer yes to all the prompts. And now that we've answered yes to all the prompts, as you can see here, our package.json has been generated. The next step, of course, is to say npm i express. So this installs express. And now that express is installed, let's quickly spin up an express server. How we do that is we just say const express is equal to require express like we'll always do. And we say const app is equal to execute express app dot listen on a particular port, which I'll define at the very top port. I'll call this 5001 and listen on that port. And when the port has been opened, the second argument of the listen method takes in the callback function that says that fires when the server is actually created. And I can then say, I'll use the template strings here and say, listening on port. And then I'll put this between template strings and say port here to the template formation here. So I'm just going to add one route to this. I'll say app.get, which is a get route. I'll just say it's a regular slash route. We've covered this earlier in the course. So that's why I'm trying to move through this fairly quickly when we were talking about express. So I'll just say rec and response. And then this is a callback function that gets fired when we hit the slash route here. And I want to do a couple of things here. I'll first of all, just say rest at send welcome home, right? I'm going to run this code and say node server. Oh, my bad. There's already another instance where this is uh, listening to port 5001. Uh, I'll just change this to 8080. Probably will be better that way, the port number. I'll just clear this and run node server again. And we can see we are listening on port 8080, right? So let's try to visit this website to see what's going on. So I'm not going to go here and say localhost 8080, right? And go here and see welcome home, right? Pretty chill. So now that I can see welcome home there. Why am I creating this express server? I want to show you that you can also pass down regular HTML with this. You can say h1, for example, and h1 like this. And this is a pure HTML, just sending an h1 tag here, then closing the h1 tag here. If we do this and we close the server by pressing Control C and running node server again and try to reload the page, we see that it's tiled with a H1 style. So in addition to this, we can also say, oh, we also want to add an A tag to this and say A href. And this is very familiar to you if you know some front end HTML, which I'd expect you to know if you're building like servers. So I just want to make a real quick link here that goes to google.com and I'll call this go to Google. Save this. I'll close the server again. Run the server by running node server again. And I reload my page. I see I get go to Google. Awesome. So if I do this, of course, I go to google.com. Perfect. So what is the issue with this? This can quickly become very bulky and very bloated. So how do we solve this situation? That's when we need to talk about creating views to display this data in an actual HTML file. So how do we send an actual HTML file to the client from the server? I'm just going to make a simple HTML file here. I'm going to call this, put this in a folder called views, and I'm going to make a file called index.html, right? And in VS Code, you can just type in this exclamation point and press the tab and it will create like a cookie cutter HTML page, my store or whatever. And then I'm going to come here and say H2, this is H1, right? And say, I will say, welcome 
home. So you can see I can have such a complicated configuration here. Imagine if I had to carry all this text and put in a tag here, you know, instead of carrying all that text and put it inside of the string here, I can just write a lot, bunch of text in a single HTML file here and just send it. So how do I send the HTML file instead of a string? To do that, I'm going to use the help of this core module in Node.js called path, require path real quick. And I'm just going to say, in this case, I'm going to locate the index.html file here by saying const HTML page is equal to path.join. And I'm going to join, I'm going to start from the directory that I'm currently in, which is called Durning, which is our home directory. And that's called underscore underscore dir name in Node.js. And I'll do a comma and I want to go into the views directory. I'll do a comma and I'll go into the index.html directory. I believe I covered path in an earlier module. It's just a, a way of like navigating through your file system in Node.js. So I start at the roots file, which is this is my Node.js crash course file. And then I go into the views and then I go to index.html. And after I found index.html, I'm going to send that to the front end, right? And save. So after doing this, I'll just press control C to close the current process. I'm just clear and I'll run node server again. So let's see what I get here. It says kind of find the path. Okay. My, this is my bad. So what I should have done here is not send the path is I I need to also bring in the FS module. Sorry, this is not the way you should do it anyway, but I'm trying to prove a point here before I actually talk about template engines. So in this case, I found my path. I want to read my path by saying FS dot read file sync. And I'm going to write this properly and I'm going to read this path, which is this. And then I want it to be in UTF eight, of course. And then I want to send what I've done here to the front end. So let me just close this process again, declare and say node server yet again for the final time. I promise below the page, I can see welcome home. Welcome home is coming, of course, from the HTML file. This is all well and good. And I can add new things here and say, he, hi there, my friend, save. And I can reload my page. I can see hi there, my friend. So we are now loading the HTML file into the client side. This is all well and good, but what is wrong with this setup here? Why is this an issue? Why shouldn't this be what we get used to? A couple of things. Let's say we have some data from, I don't know, a database or say const name equal to Clem. And I want to be able to pass that to the user, to the, to the client side, to convey the data from the server into the front end file I want to send. How do I do that? This is not entirely possible here. I mean, it is possible with a lot of like code manipulation, but it then quickly becomes a bit of a chore to keep doing that, to keep making dynamic content. So let's say, for example, I want to say, welcome home. Uh, Clem. I cannot, you know, change this name dynamically because this is a static, this is a static HTML file. So how do I make this work properly? How do I make a dynamic HTML file to be sent from the server to the client? And that is where template engines come in. So basically template engines are tools that help you build HTML pages dynamically. Instead of writing static HTML, you can use templates to insert dynamic content. You can also loop through data, conditionally render elements. This makes it easier to build and maintain web applications with dynamic content. So the very first template engine we're going to discuss is going to be called EJS. This is the very first one we're going to discuss. We don't need to bring in path. We don't need to bring in FS. We don't need to bring in extra modules into the page. We just need to bring in only the EJS module, which is also an NPM package that I'll be installing from Node Package Manager. So to just make this work, I'm just going to clear all of this, right? I'm going to clear all this, not every single thing, but just the static implementation. So I'm going to clear it out. I'm just going to have app and express, right? That's all I'm going to have for now. So. I'm going to kind of clear out this process by pressing control C. And then the next thing I want to do is I want to then install EJS. I'll say NPM I E J S. Now that we have EJS installed, how do we make it show dynamic content on our page? Well, the first step is to make sure that we have our views folder here. This views folder is exactly what we need to display our EJS views. So how do we do that? The first step, of course, is to, of course, bring in express, execute express and make it app. But then we need to then say app.set and we need to then do the following. 
by saying view engine. This was not in the set method yet, but uh, just follow me here. We're gonna set the view space engine to, in this case, EJS. Awesome. So we've installed EJS. We've set the engine to be EJS. How do we then use EJS? Easy. I'll just say, in this case, I'll do the exact same route, the home route, and then I'll have my request and response as the argument of the next callback function as always. But in this case, I'm gonna declare a data. Let's see have this dynamic data, which is an object that has a couple of things. It has title, my shop, for example, my shopping cart or whatever. And then it also has message, you can now make your purchase, right? And then we have this data here. So how do we then render this in HTML file in a dynamic way? How do we do this? Well, once we install EGS and make it our view and engine, we have access to this render method and we can then render view called index. And we want to then attach the dynamic data as a second argument. What this means is we're telling Express to render our index file and attach the dynamic data from the server to it. So where does it get this index file from? How do we actually render this index file? Well, in this case, I'll just delete this index.html. I'm gonna have, in this case, index.ejs. Awesome. To display the ejs file, we need to make it inside of a views folder and it needs to have an extension called .ejs for the file to be recognized. So now that we've done that, let's see how we can actually then make this work for this file. I'll do the exact same thing here. I'll just do like an exclamation mark and press tab. I'm gonna do a couple of stuff. I'm gonna try to change the title of this document to be the dynamic title data that we have here in line 13 to show my shopping cart, but in a dynamic way. How do I make that work? Well, it's like this. EGS is not very super clear to start with, but once you start using it more often, it becomes like a rule of thumb. So it's how we input dynamic data is we just, first of all, follow me here. I'll say the less than sign, the percentage equal to. After doing this, this takes in the dynamic title data, and then we close this by saying percentage sign less than. It's pretty weird. I know, trust me. So this is how it's supposed to be. And in this case, after we put this in, this actually tends to show that this as the title of the HTML file. But for the body, I'm just going to put this in the H1 and I'm going to put in the message, right? In the H1 tag, this message data here. So I'm just going to say, it's going to be like the same thing, right? I'm going to say less than percentage equal to message. I was going to close it. It's going to be percentage greater than sign and save. So this is exactly how I, I wish to display the dynamic data in this page. So that means that I can change this dynamically uh, depending on any condition and the HTML file that's gonna be rendered in the front end is gonna be entirely different. Let's test this out and hope it works. I'm gonna run node server, listen on port 8080. And now let's try to go to localhost 8080. As you can see now, you can see that I have a title called my shopping cart, which is coming indeed from this dynamic mapping to the title here from the title here to the title coming here from the server side. So this data is being input dynamically into the index that the EJS, and we are just outputting this data here according to this syntax, which is a little hard to follow at first, but once you start doing it more often, it becomes like a rule of thumb to you. Awesome. So the next step, of course, is we are gonna talk about handlebars in the next video.